Thanks for joining me in my one-man workshop. The weather outside for the last couple of weeks in the UK has been terrible. There's been no flying happening whatsoever. So I thought, what a great time to sit down and build uh, a headset for, for my paramedic train. Now, what I've built might not be for everyone, and there probably is an easier way to do this. However, I built this helmet for me. Um, I've used a limited budget. This is not a tutorial uh, on how to do this. It's more of an, uh, an inspiration for you guys to take small little parts away, hopefully, and uh, build your own. You can buy an off-the-shelf headset. They are quite a lot of money. They're quite pricey. You do get the, the, the quality that goes with them. Um, however, I don't have an, an unlimited budget, but what I do have is probably the smallest amount of knowledge and some time on my hands, so I thought I'd have a go and build my own. In essence, what I've done is I've taken a cheap uh, Amazon Bluetooth headset, I've integrated it into my, my pedal cups, I've run some wires, I've put some nice big buttons on the side, I've also integrated my Baofeng, Baofeng? my UHF radio uh, inside um, so I can use them at the same time and they don't step over each other. My main goals was A, for it to be cheap, uh, B, easy to use, uh, three, A, B, A, B, three. For it to be cheap, easy to use, something I could do myself. I wanted to be able to listen to music and make phone calls. Not so much the communication for the Bluetooth because the range is quite limited. And also if I wanted to change my radios at a later date, I could do that pretty easily. I've lost all the audio from when I built the, uh, the headset. So uh, excuse the narration, but let's get into it. Let's start with the helmet. I have the Solar X in limited edition scratch grey. Paired with the helmet, I have the Pelta 3M X5 ear defenders. They're extra deep, extra big, ideal for this project. One of the hardest parts I actually faced on this project was getting the shell off the helmet. I ended up using a big screwdriver and a lot of swear words. It's a good job my workshop is soundproof. The ear defenders pop off quite easily once you rotate them 90 degrees. Pulling off the gel pads was quite easy too. I kept the audio foam for later. I highly recommend the gel ear pads, they're really comfortable in flight. The Bluetooth unit is made by a company called VNet Phone, although I'm sure all these similar brands on Amazon are made in the same factory somewhere in China. It states that you can get 1,200 meters of range, but from my experience, you'd have that claim. The unit can connect up to six other units, but you have to switch channels to speak to one another. I'm not too worried about this, as I'll mainly use my UHF radio for group chat. The unit is actually waterproof, so I had to carefully cut away the plastic to reach the PCB. The PCB itself is quite basic, with some SMD push buttons and some SMD LEDs. I have no interest in seeing these while in flight, as each function has audio tones. You can either pull these buttons low to function, or in my case, I just decided to short each one for the same result. Here I am just making sure it fits. Also notice the headset and the USB charging cable that the unit comes with. A really important thing to do with any kind of project like this is to really take your time to measure all the pins. I've lost control of all the things I've popped over the years by not double checking my drawings. Here I just measured the pins for the charging cable and double checked it was correct on the board. I broke all the different components down. Here's the pin outs for the Bluetooth speakers and microphone. The speakers have four pins, a common ground, speaker inputs, and one for the microphone. Lastly, here's the pin out for the charging cable. If you do build your own, I highly recommend that you find your own pin outs rather than use mine. There's no guarantee that these will be the same. I quickly sold an external 3.5 mm connector to the board for charging, and I left it for an hour just to see if it burned my workshop down. For the radio wiring, I cut the headset that was included with the radio. They use a Kenwood style connector. I had this little board hang around that made soldering these little tiny cables easier, although you don't really need it. The pin out is similar with two speakers and a mic, but this time when you short two of the pins, it tells the radio to transmit. This is what I did to make a PTT button. I always did little tests as I went. The red LED indicates it's transmitting and the green LED indicates it's receiving. Once I desoldered all the bits I needed to make the speakers and mic from the headset, I just needed to duplicate them for the radio. I used a brass 6mm OD flexible bit of pipe for a better boom, a bigger cover for the two mics, and another small mic with tail soldered. Here's the cable I soldered up from earlier. Some spiral audio cable with XLR cables cut off. Finally, 2 meters of 12 core alarm cable. I had to make sure both microphones stay together in the correct spot and have a way of mounting them to the boom itself. I use some zip ties around each one. Notice that the tails point in the same direction as the zip ties. 
Rather than using glue to hold them, I use some heat shrink to keep them square and snug. I clipped it down slightly as I didn't want the zip tie ends going past the foam mouthpiece. I just used a little bit more heat shrink here to offer a small amount of abrasion protection and to give some relief to the solder joints. A bit more heat shrink around the brass pipe just to make it blend in. I used a pair of tweezers to hold it. It gets hot. My fingers found out the hard way the first time I tried this. The last little steps after feeding the cables through the boom was to use another bit of heat shrink to hold the mics in place. And there you have it, a neat way of holding the microphones onto the boom. Later on, I use an O-ring to hold the mouthpiece on. To mount two speakers in each ear cup, I start off with a cardboard template, I scan it as my PC, and then drew it up in CAD. It's the old school way of doing it, but it works for me. Yes, I cheated and used my laser cut for the mounts. In my typical fashion, I bought a cheap laser and upgraded it. In the end, I used some red 3mm acrylic. It's satisfying to pull the backing off. Each speaker has a small ridge around the casing. They just snap into the mounts. I made sure though that the speakers did not protrude past the mount. I did not want them touching my ears, making the gel pads redundant. I secured them in with some hot glue, just in case. If you're not into torture, I would probably stop here. There's a lot of wires to strip, tin and assign to each pin. I took my time and double checked each color I would use. I got impatient here, I soldered directly onto the button pins. Not only did they not feel secure, but there was a possibility of accidental button pushes. Basically, I tried to be lazy. So I enjoyed a bit more torture by unsoldering the buttons off the PCB. A little heat on each side and a bit of a wiggle got them off, making sure to use lots of solder. The downside of using a lot of solder though is that you leave a lot of the flux on the PCB making it look messy. A little bit of IPA and a gentle scrub with a Q-tip will get it off quickly. I used some solder wick to get the old solder off and then added some fresh solder to each one. You might be thinking that this is a bit of a waste of time. You could be right. However, I wanted to have the best possible solder joint I could achieve so I didn't end up with cold solders or connections that break off after a while. The yellow and grey I decided were going to be for my on button. No real reason apart from these two wires were next to each other coming out of the sheath. This is the official tug test. Another quick little test to make sure it works as I'd hoped with such long cable runs. Thankfully, it all worked as planned. Shorting out the pins to turn it off and making sure not to touch any of the bare pins, starting a fire. After a few cups of tea, all the cables were soldered on, and after a poor attempt at cable management, I used another zip tie to secure my handiwork. The other cable with the crane fitting is the antenna. I'll cover that bit shortly. Now it's time to drill the holes in the left ear cup for the cables and the fittings. I used some 6mm grommets with long sleeves. These were tight to get in once I drilled a pilot hole and worked my way up. Don't cheap out on blunt drill bits, you will thank me later. I made sure to go slow. The ear cups have a rubbery top layer. I didn't want to tear this as I went through. It left it looking a little rough. But after a quick clean up with a sharp blade, this took care of the finish. I made sure to leave enough room in between each grommet so I would have space to work with. Also slightly, I undersized the holes. I want them really tight to maintain a good airtight seal. There's no point in having holes in ear defenders, otherwise what's the point in wearing them? Test fitting as I go, here I have the top two holes for the cables fitted with grommets. Yes, two cables, a total of 24 wires. I don't actually need that many at the moment, but I have some other plans in the future for these. I have also test fitted the 3.5mm jack, leaving plenty of space. I offered up the boom just to make sure it was where I want it to be. To be honest, not that I had a choice right now if it was wrong. After all, I have a 6mm hole in my ear cup. It was an educated guess using pictures online and some rough measurements that worked out just fine. I also fitted the mini XLR audio socket for my radio. It wasn't an enjoyable experience drilling a 12mm hole. Here I protected the 3.5mm connector with a boot. It's just an offcut from one of the grommet sleeves. 
and I've also sold on some tails to the PCB for the headphones and microphone. I figured it would be easier to solder cable to cable rather than solder on each wire and find out I had done it wrong. Once I was happy and I had triple checked the colour of each wire I had soldered on, I covered the board in more heat shrink. It gives it a little bit more protection from shorting out. I made sure to leave the antenna exposed so I could route it somewhere free. If you like a bit of soldering, you'll enjoy this part because there's a lot of it. Due to my poor video skills and even worse lighting, you can just about see that the Bluetooth unit is in the ear cup. Now I'm just soldering on the speaker for the Bluetooth unit, making sure I use another bit of heat shrink and that the colours are correct. At this point I decided to take a break from the ear cup and solder out the cable for the radio. If I want to use a different radio at a later date, I can make a new one. If I don't want to fly with my radio at all, I can just disconnect the whole lot. Here I am just pointing at random things, no idea what I'm saying because I lost all of the audio somewhere. I think I'm just showing you that the left Bluetooth speaker is connected and the left speaker is also connected along with a mini XLR plug. Some of the connectors now run over to the right ear cup. After all the cables were soldered together, I tried to get them as neat as possible and secure them all with zip ties. Note that the cables and the mic boom are secured in the same way. I've cut the audio foam that come out of the ear cups into little bits, just so I can get as much of it back in as I can. I built up a wall of foam that sits flush with the ear cups, as I needed somewhere to rest the speaker mounts I made earlier. Here you can see how the speaker mount sits on top of the foam. I cut up a little bit of fat I had from another project to cover it up for that professional look. The ear cup caps, I guess you can call them, get put over the top of them, and then both parts are pushed together, compressing the foam slightly, allowing the caps to snap in place, keeping it all nice and snug. Not forgetting that I somehow managed to get the antenna into a little bit of free air, I think this step improved the range by quite a bit. A bit of a change from soldering, I decided to make sure I had some room for both cables to run inside the headliner. There's already a small channel from factory for one cable, I just needed to make it wider for two. Here is some footage of me taking the head strap off and using a soldering iron to widen that channel. I cleaned it up with the Dremel, making sure not to go any deeper than a few millimetres, just to keep the integrity of the helmet intact. Putting it all back together and making sure it worked like it was supposed to was a good job done. The right cup holds all of my push buttons. Much like drilling holes in the other ear cup, I made a pilot hole and worked my way up through drill sizes before I switched over to using a step drill. Not forgetting that each button has a nut to hold them in place, I made sure to leave enough space between them. At this point I wasn't too worried about the colours, more just about the position of each one. Here you can see that the button doesn't actually sit flush. This is what I wanted. Not only will this help keep the nut secure, almost like a spring washer, it also helps with the sealing of the gaps around the case. One thing I had to be careful was not to strip the plastic thread on the buttons. Wonky buttons at this point would have ruined the looks. And even though this is a DIY build, I still wanted it to look as good as my skill would allow. All the buttons were test fitted and I used a multimeter just to make sure they all still worked and that forcing them flush didn't affect them. Now I just have to prep the cables. I used yet more heat shrink because apparently I've now developed a fetish for it. Like most projects near the end, you start to get a little bit impatient and you make mistakes that cost you more time. I run all the cables under the headlining at this point and out to the other side. I use a bit of tape to work out where I needed to pull the cables to and then I started soldering all the cables up to the buttons. I'll save you some time by watching that because at this point you get the idea. Fixing the last bits in, snapping the caps on and that's the right ear cup done. Yes, I expect you notice that one of the speakers has changed. What I'll say is that keep delicate metal speakers away from high powered magnets. At this point I stopped drinking tea and had a few well deserved beers and admired my handiwork.
got this far, thanks very much for watching. That's quite a lot to take in. I'll just quickly run through all the buttons and just to show you what each one does. On the bottom of the right ear cup, uh, we have a red and black button. The red button is to turn the Bluetooth unit on. Uh, press once for on and if you were to hold it for a few seconds it connects to your phone. Turn the Bluetooth unit off, uh, you just press the back one. It gives you an audio tone each time you press the button. But if we look at the front we've got two white buttons. We've got the volume up and volume down, both operated by push. Obviously the top one's volume up, the bottom one's volume down. If you are listening to music and you wanted to go to the next track, you would hold the top one for two seconds. And likewise, if you wanted to go back a track, you'd hold the bottom one for two seconds. Now, if we look at the back of the ear cup, we have a black and green button. If you were to press the green button, it starts to play your music. Uh, if you're pressing hold, it automatically rings the last person you spoke to. So whoever's on your recent call list, it would ring them. If you're in a phone call and you want to terminate the phone call, you just press it once and it would terminate the phone call. The black button is basically channel B. So when you start this unit up, it starts in channel A. If you want to have uh, another uh, open conversation with someone and you're paired with them, you press this to change to channel B. Now, unfortunately, the way these are set up, you can only speak to one person at a time on each channel. The last button on the right ear cup is the red one. And this is basically a PTT or push to talk. Uh, so you push and hold and you would talk normally over your normal UHF radio. On the left hand side of the ear cup, we have the Bluetooth module obviously installed, the 3.5 millimeter jack, the four pin quick connector, quick locking connector uh, for your radio. And obviously we have the boom coming out. And I don't know if you can just see here, but I literally just got the, the tip of the uh, antenna just popping out, just to try and get a little bit more range. So the range on this, uh, the Bluetooth is probably between 500 and 800 meters, I guess. Sometimes it's further, sometimes it's a lot less however it works really well on the ground or if you're really close to a pilot so just take that into consideration so this is the audio quality now recorded from my bluetooth headset straight to my phone you probably notice that the audio quality dropped slightly you can probably also hear some slight crackling some buzzing uh, like now it kind of comes and goes what probably doesn't help at the minute is i'm still in my workshop which is one big metal tin cage let's just quickly check out the speaker quality that i can hear just bear in mind in the real world it's really hard for me to record actually what i'm hearing but hopefully it gives you a really good example of the kind of quality to expect so we're on wings level there reduce the bar forward pressure as you roll out you've reduced the power as well for something i don't know why i don't know why What you've probably noticed straight away is the bass is missing. Obviously these are real small cheap speakers. One of my future upgrades is actually to put some different speakers in and hopefully get that bass back because I feel they're slightly tinny. Remembering the price, it's not actually that bad at all. The UHF radio connected, it sounds exactly like you would expect a normal uh, personal radio to sound like. The audio is pretty clear. Really happy the way it turned out. I'm well within budget and I've got myself a fully functional uh, headset which should last me many years. I really hope this gives you some inspiration to go build one yourself or at least give it a go. Uh, the reason this works so well for me is I currently fly with my throttle in my left hand um, so the buttons on the right really free up uh, that issue for me of trying to let go of my throttle hand and you know press buttons. Sadly I've got no in-flight footage of me using the helmet however that's a story for next time. Really thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video give me a thumbs up. Um, I'm not a big YouTuber, first YouTube video I've ever made, however it's something that I really wanted to share with you. I was inspired by YouTube by watching these videos. I really hope this inspires you to go build your own. Thanks very much for watching. Lastly, I just want to give a huge thanks to a chap called Andy Bex. He was my main inspiration for building this helmet. Um, I watched one of his YouTube videos uh, probably six months ago now. We've been chatting to him from and without his help this project would have never started. You can check out some of Andy's videos below. I've provided a link in the description and also because I don't have any other videos on YouTube yet I've left some links for my other flying friends that have supported me along the way so I definitely think you should check them out. Look out for my next episode where I actually put my GoPro on my helmet. Until then blue skies stay flying.